Welcome back, folks, to the desk. Halfway point here in our SPL Sunday afternoon, the final SPL Sunday afternoon of our spring split. Now I've traded out my taco for an Anatoly. We're uh, going from the West Coast to the East Coast. New, my fellow New York brother, and how you doing, buddy? Pretty good, man. I'm having a great time. You know, some North American action to close out the sixth week of the SPL Spring Split. We also have the charity event going on the next week. Can't look, can't wait for that one. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of people in here. My buddy again, New York brother and Wolfie 2032 coming to town, representing competitive online. Uh, Allied's gonna be in town. We've got Matty Pocket and a bunch of other players that you might know from around the scene as well. So. Very excited to really check it out. Mr. Chapo right there. We just saw him play for Noble. Unfortunately, unable to really find some wins. Mifflin over there from the console scene. Aurora, we all know the chunk. And shout out to Stolzy, my man over there uh, from, well, got to say it, New York brethren, although he's upstate, so that doesn't really count. Uh, he's rocking out from the Paladin scene, so high-res love all the way around. A lot of fun stuff. If you guys saw the, uh, the, the spring thing last year, they put a giant bug on my face. I fought the guy that did that, and they won't be doing that again. Instead, we're going to make Aggro eat ketchup. It's probably just as bad for him. It's going to be really hilarious. But our game's not so hilarious. Very serious as we head into our matches today. And also very serious is the fact that we are three. Smite has celebrated three years in total here uh, after exiting their beta. And because of that, we're spreading the love to you. 25% off Norse stuff there. And, of course, gems for winning. Stop losing your games. If you win, you actually get some gems. So that's certainly what you want to do. And that's in-game, but out of game, you can celebrate as well. Hit point, rock in the sale as well. Hit point, clothing, you can pick up some stuff. 15% off over there. So absolutely want to check out some of that. A lot of options available to you in terms of inside of Smite and outside of Smite, whether you want to dress up your character or dress up yourself. That's cute. <laughs> I have uh, F. Dot Speechless so here, actually. <laughs> Either way, we uh, we have some the remainder of the Sunday coming at you. LG will finish our day, but right before we see LG take on Eager, we're going to take a look at Gabe versus E United. Gabe versus E United is a very important matchup for E United. There's a lot of tie stipulations for this set specifically. If E United have a 2-0 here, they're going to be at 14 points, which is going to tie Eager. And if Eager lose their set completely to Luminosity, not able to pick up any sort of games, they'll stay at 14 and because of the head to head record being at one apiece that will be a tiebreaker not only that e united also has another tiebreaker situation with luminosity if e united pick up only one game this set they'll be at 12 points and now mm -hmm. this time if luminosity lose both of their games against eager because of that another tied head to head right. record those two teams will also be in a tiebreaker scenario. So these two matches are extremely important, and don't worry, Tolly's going to keep you up to date on all of this stuff as far as the ties are concerned, so you definitely don't want to miss a moment of the action. Gabe versus E United specifically. We looked at the league as a whole, and now let's drill down into our next matchup. Gabe versus E United. These are two teams that I think have both been relatively inconsistent despite very strong rosters. You would expect that memory of Gabe was just to come off firing shots considering how well they did in the relegations, but they can, they've been halted a little bit since the second half of this spring split. They had a good start to things, mm -hmm. but now being slow. But United, on the other hand, they started to pick things up once they got Benji back in that soul lane. That's really the key for me here is that United has really, if you ask me, United not only went through a organizational change when they left enemy and moved over to United, kind of the same thing, but really it was the identity shift when Benji came by. It was a return to what this team used to be, including some of the new adjustments that they've made, and I think that this has just been overall a really strong look for what United has been able to do. In memory of Gabe, on the other hand, kind of the opposite. They came out really hot and as kind of been a little bit quieter here but still shown a very very strong promise here with these two squads, what matchup are you looking specifically to really shape the course of the matchup? I think it's going to be the jungle matchup here. Verizial up against Sinoshore. It's going to be different styles. You know, the setup potentially that Verizial has for his teammates, whether or not that's going to be successful, is going to be the determining factor of how comfortable Chaos is going to be in that mid lane. You mentioned him. That's what I'm looking at, my man Tolly. I want to see these mid laners go off. I really like both of these guys, and I think that the power out of the mid lane mage will be a big case for why these two teams either wind up winning or losing to bring us to picks and bands and of course the action on the battlefield is going to be taco and mr hindu man himself give it up and let's bring it to us 
Mr. Hindu man. I got like that. How you doing, Sako? Mr. I'm doing pretty good. Feeling well, pretty good. This game, they would discuss it on the desk camp on maybe Sandshaw, Verizial, Chaos, Hurrywind could be in this one. For me, it's all down to picks and bands because that kind of dictates who the one, who the superstar could be. A hundred percent, I would have to agree with you solely because Gabe, like we've mentioned, they had such a strong impact when they were first going through the relegation yeah. phase. But I think a lot of that was mostly attributed to individual skill set as opposed to just overall team synergy. But E United are like the opposite side of the spectrum where yeah. that's a team that's always been based around synergy as opposed to that, not necessarily, you know, individuals being bad, but not the strongest mechanically. Yeah. I feel like both these teams are kind of like playing on a slide in a playground, right? <laughs> and you saw Memory Gate, they climbed the slide first of all, and now they're sliding down it as the season goes on, whereas E United started at the bottom of the slide and then started to climb it up again now. So two different teams, both in a similar situation of trying to find consistency more than anything else here. Zeus, Sylvanas, Scotty for Memory Gate, though. That is a very strong three-man draft already between the Zeus, Sylvanas, and Scotty. Tons of AoE mm. and early game pressure potential on the side of Gabe. Meanwhile, United with a little bit, you know, more mid to late game orientation considering the Athena Vulcan picks. So there's still some objective control being yeah. based around that, but it can be a little bit more difficult to execute. Both very good at team fighting. Both these squads that have been drafted so far. Only difference is E United can do it from a bit further range with that Vulcan ultimate as well. The Athena taunts could come into play as well. And then you've got Osiris and now with the Hoi added as well. Both are very team fight orientated here. Circle seem to be the game plan here on the side of E United, other than the Osiris pick, of course, but mm. even he can, you know, have a bit of an impact. And the Changa, mm. so that's... Is that Sander show jumping in the jungle? We've seen a lot of it, well, maybe not with the Thanatos. Well, Ooh. you have to consider, though, that Walrus loves playing Thanatos in that solo lane, so it wouldn't surprise me to see Sino on Changa jungle, Walrus on the Thanos solo, and then Sylvana support. It's also the fact that Osiris against Changa, the tether will reduce the amount of healing you do as well. While the tether is attached, if you didn't know that at home, Ymir, the final pick for E United here, which will probably be their jungler as well. Verizio going for the Ymir up against what more than likely I feel will be Changa. Payne de Villan has really established a name for himself on that Athena, so I would have to say I Got don't it. expect him to play Amir in the support role, but I, I it it's wouldn't. Possible. It is still a possibility for sure, for certain. Well, as we so. get to game, then we'll see how this one begins. Memory of Gabon E United, very important for both these two teams. Standing is any everything right now. E United have the chance to make sure they're a top two team and get themselves some masters. They have to win this set and put pressure on the LG Eager boys to perform to their standards. Otherwise, E United could slip in. I mean, Gabe are kind of in the same boat, though, if you think about it. I, they're at eight points, so they also want to remain with the identity that we are a top three team as well, or a top two team even. Yeah. But, I, I mean, while they won't necessarily have that possibility to reach 12 points, it's still pretty phenomenal to think that this could really be their chance to bounce back into the top end of the league. When you look at what happened with North America this split, though, you can say flashpoint at the bottom, but everybody else has been in the running for a top four spot potentially. Obviously, the top two feel like it has been LG and Ego all season long, but everybody else very, very centered and could trade any single time. Talk about trades here. 3v3 a minute at the start. Benji from one side, Walrus from the other. Hurry wins the first one to get hit here, and he's already on the run. Run, hurry, run. How fast can you go? Not fast without any boots, my friend. That's going to cause you a couple of issues, but Benji's taking a lot more damage from those minions. Nobody's going to end up dying here. And the amount of experience gained here, Taku, is actually low because it's a three-way split. A really interesting aspect that both of the solo laners would opt to start in that mid-roll, except you have to consider one thing that E United differently. Verizio was hanging out in that solo lane, soaking up the wave farm. Completely true. Verizio managed to get some free farm on that right hand side. Now level two on the Ymir, pressuring a little bit more onto Walrus once more on this next wave coming in. This does deny Benji some farm here, Taco, but it does mean they cannot to invade off this. But Walrus already expended his TP in comparison to Benji, who just walked over to that lane, which I think was the smarter decision, because now with Walrus's TP being down, like you mentioned, they're just going to freely invade the jungle buffs, and if Walrus tries to contest and he gets poked out a little bit too low, it's going to take him a hot minute to get back to that lane. Well, surprisingly enough, this is working out well for memory of Gabe, too, because the left-hand side of the map, Sylvanas and Scardi, Yonic and Snoopy, invade, push the wave against Panda Cat, steal the red and the purple buff as well, denying the experience from the left, which answers the blue buff invade on the right and actually gives him a bit of a lead. 
Applying the pressure so early on to Panda Cat 2 is exactly what you want to do as Scotty. The matchup is a lot more favorable for Scotty, considering that she has the dog to her advantage. And what is it about Scotty that really a lot of people are playing her for now? Is it her damage potential control? or Because on paper, she's a lot like AMC, right? She doesn't really have that much escapability, or does she? Well, I mean, people kind of sleep on how much movement speed you get off of the permafrost ability. That ability, that actually, you go sonic speeds with as soon as it's proc'd, but it's just the dog. The dog, dog is so, Kaldar is so impossible to deal with early, especially at these early on stages. And granted, as Hu Yi, your one is going to penetrate through the Kaldar and also be able to hit Scotty potentially. That's and true. You, you have your AoE slowing ability, but. If you try to use the standard Hu Yi 3 1 combination, uh, you're going to find yourself in a world of hurt as soon as Scotty pops her ultimate. Now, I mentioned maybe she had a little bit of a lack of mobility. Obviously, the permafrost was the last thing to be buffed on Scotty, allowing her to get some mobility after she steps off the ice as well. And Snoopy, one of the most prevalent players of AMC in the Pro League overall, I want to say there. He's been the one that's gone to it most. And if AMC and, and Scotty are like, considered similar in terms of escapability being lacking, then he's got the advantage of already playing a lot of AMC, so he should understand what he's got to do in team fights. Snoopy is not foreign to these immobile hunters in the slightest, and if anything, he loves having that janky ADC pick because mm. it's just something that most people aren't accustomed to having to play against, especially underneath Snoopy's play style. Well, Warriors at the moment going to be beaten under the tower. This is would have happened, I feel, anyway, Taco, even if we didn't see the crazy shenanigans at the start of the game. Thanatos versus Osiris. Osiris is one of the best lane bullies in the game. The issue is uh, Thanatos, I mean, ideally you want to use your three to silence out abilities, but there's not a whole lot of ability really. to silence out from the Osiris. Sir, you can maybe prevent him from his little AOE ability or a tether momentarily, but it doesn't do oh, much Simon in the long shows run. a bit of an awkward position here in the jungle. Was looking to contest, now frozen in place and forced to beat. Still giving chase though is Benji, and that's also going to get the Waxy Moon out of Sinus Shaw. Not only do they get that EU uh, United, they also steal away the Elementals too. Tons of pressure all over from E United so far this game. And I mean, they're playing this to their advantage, considering that on paper, you would consider Gabe to have the stronger early game draft. Ton onto Ionic, gonna put him in an awkward spot. Great wall from Virizial to follow that up too. Ionic's looking for an ult if he can find it. That's why he pushed forward. Instead, now he turns onto Virizial, and immediately Virizial gonna disengage there. Did pick up an Aegis at the start of the game to absorb some of that damage from Horrywind. Nice, interesting back and forth. The Athena ultimate there to help with the damage reduction onto Virizial, just really ensuring uh -oh. the Zeus didn't have much effect. Panda Cat could have been a bit of trouble there if that damage would have come through from Snoopy off the back of that. Snoopy's looking to invade the red buff, but he is alone against four members here of a United. Seeing Payne Devion dash towards his face. He's like, nope, peace, I'm out. I'll go back and farm. <laughs> you always want to be the hunter to make the aggressive play whenever you poke out the enemy ADC so much. But well, as soon as you see four people hanging around that red yeah. buff, you, you just kind of know it's time Zap to go home. Zap would have got it, though, right? Zap would have got it. Zap would have gotten the buff and a quadra kill. You reckon? 100%. Well, find out if he can do that later on in the LG set, then <laughs> see if that comes about, if he gets the opportunity, and if he does even play Scardy. On the left -hand side, Snoopy has still pressured Panda Cat again. Panda Cat actually going to burn his ultimate there. I like that call, Taco, overall. It's just getting back to base quicker. There's nothing wrong with expending your ultimate, especially this early on in the game. The only possible downside is if, in memory of Gabe, try to look for an early gold fearing. Which but they could have done. But they, they realized it. The Zeus ultimate is still on cooldown. It's going to be coming back up pretty soon. I, it wouldn't surprise me if they were to back, buy up, and then potentially come back for it. So yeah. E United are certainly going to have to keep this in mind. I think both E United and Memory of Gabe will watch the game tape back of just that one moment there where we saw Panda Cat's ult get used. Snoopy spotted that ult getting used too. And the rest of E United actually returned back to base. There was a big window for a free goal fury where you wouldn't have had to use ultimates either. IMAC will be kicking themselves and E United will be thanking their lucky <laughs> stars after that little start. Uh, they did actually have ward control as well on the side of a memory yeah. of Gabe. So nobody really close by, but that's just one of those things where you can't always Hindsight, know what's right? going on. Hindsight's 2020. You get an overall vision of the map, you can call a lot of things differently than these players. These players have to do it in the moment. They only get a couple of seconds to really think about the call and whether the call is correct and if you're going to follow it as a team too. Still no kills in this game. Approaching seven minutes so far. Boots are starting to come online for pretty much everybody or have come online for anybody. The difference is I can see Ninja Tabby on the side of Panda Cat here, who may be going Transcendence as well, more than likely, as is Snoopy, but he's come with the Warrior Tabby. And Walrus is just so stubborn in that solo lane right now, taking all those free 
pokes and in hands straight to the face. But you can't stop it sometimes. Though. It's a Cyrus, right? That's all he ever does is just hit you in the face. He's trying to prevent himself from losing as much gold, but it, it's just not really making enough of a difference. Three members in the mid lane for iMug, and now Unite going to do the same thing. Verizio's hanging around the corner there. Doesn't have Blink, as we mentioned earlier on. The Relic of Choice for the Ymir jungle right now has been the Aegis, which tells me the walls are very important here, Taco. For the most part, they just really want to try and avoid any sort of awkward engagements. And it looks like Ionic could be catching himself Try in an awkward engagement. Trying to invest a little bit onto Ionic there. Just a little bit too far away for the freeze combo to be available. The Hunters, though, are going to trade. And Calde is coming into play. Immediately, Calde gets low on health. And so Snoopy pops the ultimate. But Panda Cat turns this around. Verizio now giving chase. Has speed buffs to close the gap. Hori went and Sanashur on the way. Snoopy uses his beads to escape the slow. And he's going to be back to safety. Meanwhile, Hori, who's made this rotation, is taking a lot of damage. But he will pick up Panda Cat for first blood for, as well. Horiwen's still alive. The backfire, not even from Chaos. The meditation <laughs> comes out as well from Ionic. And now he's a United turning tail. They're on the run. Pain Divionis not being looked at yet, but he's definitely easy to be picked up. Sinashore wanted Verizio so bad. I think they dropped Athena there too, Taco. And Walrus making the rotation over from the Soul Lane side, but unfortunately unable to pick up anything as well. Well, they might be able to pick something up, so don't get too oh, far the, yourself. The Gold Fury at the same time. Yeah. The Gold Fury is still an option which is definitely the smart play to make considering that you don't want to just waste out your soul laner's rotation. He's there, he's available, we might as well take this out. And we talk about this a lot when you actually see a fight going on. Sometimes it's not necessarily good to chase a kill for a kill's sake if you can go elsewhere and get something else. And in that circumstance there, uh, they did drop a kill against Pain. Honestly, overall, they could have potentially picked up Verizial as well, but instead, they let them run back, have to recall, so they get that window for the Gold Fury. Target focus got a little chaotic there on the side of In Memory of Gay, but you can't really blame them too much considering things can get a bit hectic when you're in the heat of the moment sure. and you see two targets really low. You would much rather pick up the jungler as opposed to the support. Very dangerous situation that Horiwin put himself in for that first blood, though, but it was well well played by himself and his team as well to rally around him, keep him going and surviving. Benji up against Walrus. Benji does have a two-level lead now, but this is all down to the start Walrus has done and also that teleport to the Gold Fury. But once the Osiris starts becoming a factor uh -oh. into team fights, it can be really problematic, and this it's about to be a big problem for Panda Cat as he falls down to Snoopy and Ionic. Ionic mainly with the one with the kill there overall. Snoopy did all the work, but that's sometimes what happens as a support. Dark damage, you can't help it sometimes. You will pick up the kill. So it goes the way of Ionic. That'll escalate his build a little bit quicker, get him to his next stage, which is probably Heart Ward Amulet. Can't complain too much, though, about Ionic picking up that kill, considering that Pain was making the rotation. He was nearly there, and yep. you never know what can happen. We saw two members of United already escape underneath that 5% HP threshold. So sometimes it's it's OK for the support to pick that up. Very tricky in the mid lane for E United to look for aggression, even though they do have the Ymir and Athena combo for setup against the likes of a Chonga and a Zeus in the mid lane every time. You focus one, the other one's going to crush you for damage. It's going to be pretty problematic, and that's mostly where you just have to try and depend on Benji for introducing himself into yeah. the team fights at that point in time. And where do you want Benji to really look at this game? Because he is very physical focused. Should he be looking towards Snoopy in these engagements? Or do you really want him on one of these mages, the jungler, like Changa or Zeus? You want to see Osiris on that Changa all day long because he's like the best chance that they're going to have as far as initial healing reduction is concerned before yep. they can get some items online. It's, it's really just going to be how well can Benji position himself against Sino and how well can he try to effectively shut him down? Well, if that's what you're saying, then it's got to be a little bit of a while before we see United start to make those sort of plays on to Sino, sure. Because at the moment, Benji has invested in Breastplate of Valor, physical defense early on. No magical, which is one of the things you've got to deal with with a heavy magical composition. And especially with the Changa, who has sleeper yeah. damage. I mean, it's no surprise to anybody, I think, at this point in time. We've seen so many Changa jungles recently. Shout out to DJ Pernicus. But it's just, she is really problematic. And he's going for the race car build as well by the looks of it. Shield of Regrowth seems to be being worked on by Sinoshaw after the full boots too. Benji's bit off a little bit too much here, looking for the speed buff. Reinforcements are on the way. The reinforcements weren't really there in time, however. Yeah, Imog do want to dip a little bit from the engagement just to make sure that there's no collapse coming in from United. But they did what they needed to, secure their own speed. You don't want to take up any unnecessary fights at this stage in the game if you're E United. Your Soul Laner already has a two level lead on the enemy teams. So you can pressure out, and it's fine and dandy if you want to look for something, but don't overextend it. 
Yeah, for me right now, how this game has gone, I'm generally looking at Snoopy versus Panda Cat. That's the, big, the biggest talking point. But man, that may change now with Ionic in an awkward spot here. Hurrywind's all defensively used to zone away. The Ooh. execute came through, <laughs> but it was Aegis by Verizio. Verizio's still going to live. Sinusure jumps to the backside onto Hurrywind, who beads immediately. The Athena ult is good. The Vulcan ult is better, but it wasn't needed to bring down Hurrywind anyway. Sinusure on the front line is trying to get aggressive some more. Three members of IMAG want to give chase to Chaos here, who's low on mana. But on the right hand side, the weaker target was Benji. But at the same time, he had that mobility to get away. Unfortunate circumstance right there for Hurry Win. It's just that moment in time where you just you just know it's over. <laughs> well, looks like that went one for one overall. Panda Cat nearly, nearly took both. But at the same time, Snoopy, I think, misplayed that a little bit and dropped one of those. But it's all no doom, no harm. It's going to be fine with war coverage going the way of IMOG right now with where that blue ward is, just near the purple and red buff. The gold lead isn't anything to talk about, though, Taka, right now. It's only four, 500, and experience the same thing. These two teams are still feeling each other out, I'd say, especially with the way that you can tell with how United's pathed into the jungle of Gabe. It's like I was mentioning earlier, they want to potentially look for something, but they're not trying to overcommit to anything just yet. That's why we saw such a quick disengage from EU United as soon as the rotation came through for Gabe underneath that speed buff fight. It really feels that how this game is probably going to get played out looking at team fights is EU United are going to be the aggressors, they're going to initiate the fight. And if memory of Gabe can hold off on the initial engagement and not get picked, I'll be blown up immediately. They can turn that fight around by whittling people down in health pools and resustaining back up. And that's when Warus on that Thanatos could come into play. Well, Gabe doesn't really have much of a choice because if you look at their lineup, sure, they have great counter engage, a pretty solid amount of sustain, but their initiation isn't really there. It is a little bit lackluster, isn't it? You're going to need Deonic to either get Blink or find some good pulls or rely on Waxing Moons potentially from Sinusure to set things up for memory of Gabe here. So they are going to be the counter initiators in this game. They just need the fights to last as long as possible because even with a little bit of healing reduction coming through on the side of EU United, it's still going to be incredibly difficult should this engagement start extending past that normal threshold because, I mean, you've got Athena and Amir. That's yep. a lot of hard CC for Gabe to try and deal with. And so there's certainly still opportunities all around for EU United to find potential picks. And not just that, you've also got that Vulcan as well. Those meatballs do cause a lot of problems with those knock-ups. They can pull you and push you in different directions that you don't necessarily expect to go in as well. Pestilence is online for Benji right now. That's the first bit of anti heal we've seen picked up other than his ultimate. Sinus showing mid being aggressed on as is Ionic in the jungle. So a bit of a split difference there from EU United on aggression side. But Sinus Show got poked out a little bit there. Bad news is he is a healer, <laughs> as is Ionic, and that will change very quickly. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like much poke is really being provided to the side of In Memory of Gabe. It's it's just that's the issue you encounter every single time with Changa Sylvanas. Well, just keep an eye on where Verizial is on the left-hand side now. He has got Blink Online now on the Ymir. This is going to be an, another engagement tool for EU United. Not necessarily going to have to be the taunt from Pain to Beyond. And maybe Verizial could catch Ionic around the corner here. The ult has been dropped early. They're looking at Ionic, but the ult from Chaos did not find a home. Taunt onto Sinusure. Great meatball from Chaos. And immediately, EU United now looking to disengage after a squandered engagement. That was... Uh, Chaos jumped the gun a little bit there. He was really expecting Hurrywind to keep moving towards Verizio mm. with the ward bait, but it just completely ineffective. Blink freeze from Verizio will get three and three sets of beads as well. Verizio still alive on the front side as Hurrywind is getting a lot of damage up onto him. The Aegis bought him a moment, as did the up, but not long enough to survive. Panda Cat has already taken out Ionic. Snoopy being beat down by Benji. Benji really wants Snoopy and keeping him out of the fight. Sinusure on peel duty here, but now Sinusure gets hit by the sickle as well. Now Benji back on it onto Snoopy again. The permafrost will help Snoopy continue to survive, but he United come out of that team fight not looking too bad, a bit healthier than memory of Gabe. Which is surprising considering that Gabe's actually the one with the healers, but that's the damage and the risk factor that e Gabe is trying to play into. E United had the engagement, they trapped them, and even underneath that Zeus ultimate, E United still came out on top. Well, teleport coming in from Verizial, I think, and Pain to be on all five members of E United are here, and Sinus Show has been off more than he likes. Meatball Mariana coming out from Chaos. That's a nice one for a Sunday, that's for sure. The Gold Fury started up again now by E United. 
and it's going to be incredibly difficult for Gabe to try and contest. I would honestly prefer to see them just let this one go, but Yana can find himself in a little bit of danger if he's not careful, and the Taunt Athena Taunt's well. about to come through. However, the permafrost has helped them out. Chaos's ultimate did some work to Ionic, but Panda Cat ended up eating more than he bargained for. He's forced out of the back as Hurrywind went forward looking for a cleanup kill. He's forced it all in there because he was going to die anyway. Chaos with the backfire will pick him up, and now Snoopy, he also has gone in too deep. I have memory of Gabe wanting to fight this, and I don't think this was a good call. And the perfect juke out from Panda Cat. Walrus is off the mark with the ultimate. Still managed to pick him up with the death sight. But now he's on the run from Virizial and Benji. And Benji on the Osiris. Oh, man. The blinks, man. The blinks. The blinks will get him away from the danger as well. As well as he's working towards shield or regrowth right now. He's not got that online just yet. But we could see United look for the portal demon here. If they recognize they've got another window with three members currently dead on the side of memory of Gabe, they could have potentially gone for that. But that's 100% in E United's favor. Mm. And again, that was just Gabe being a little bit too stubborn. As soon as the gold fear was going down, I mean, Sino Sin got picked. Your Changa is off the table. Your jungler is yep. removed. You're already in a 4v5 situation at best. Just back off. Not really seen a teleport work out that well as well from a jungler's point of view in the early game in stages other than Virizial's there. We've seen DJ do it a couple of times. Not to amount of potential that just came out of that one that we saw Virizial use. And to the same extent, I, I mean, that was a wonderful rotation played by United, completely yeah. baiting Gabe in. Because you saw Yannick, he really wanted to just try and check it, maybe Definitely. see if he could get a cheeky one down. But oh, smart well. response by Gabe here to just pick up the portal demon. But a bad response from United. They should not have really left that window open, Taco. You know, they, they had the opportunity to ward up and get that side monetized and controlled just in case memory of Gabe came over there, or even take it themselves instead. They just backed away, went and bought, and it just allowed Memory of Gabe to answer back some of that Gold Fury fight. A little lackadaisical by E United, but part of that can be attributed to they just wanted to farm. They just wanted to go back to their lane, slow down the pacing. But now with Portal Demon being taken off the table, that just opens up for E United to try and put some pressure onto this mid lane. Lane freeze from Viriz. You're looking at Sinus Shaw. Sinus Shaw will get hit by that Vulcan Ultimate to the backside. Ionic Soul defensively is going to keep Virizio pinned in an awkward spot after the pull. Walrus versus Benji is not a fight Walrus really wants to get involved in, but he might have to soon because Benji. He's closing the gap around the back, and now Memory of Gabe are flanked round as well. They're pinned under this tier too. But that Vulcan damage? Hurrywind was just at 30% HP. And, and now he's not. <laughs> and now he's full health. And that's how they deal with it. So five members are going to defend the mid lane against five members of E United. E United realized, though, with a full five man group and the amount of sustain, they can't really chunk them down anymore. At this stage in time, the United really just have to play it a little bit smarter within these jungle confines. They need to just look for the all-in burst potential onto somebody before Walrus has a chance to return the favor. Well, less than a thousand gold difference between each of the players on these teams. I know it's a three and a half thousand gold day, but when you split that between five, it's not as big as it looks on paper. It's about a quarter of an item, half an item at best. Especially as this game continues to go longer and longer, those items take a lot more to purchase because you want those high end game ones. Especially when you consider that Panicat's build is already going to be taking a little bit as far as the expenses are concerned. And I mean, he's probably going to be looking to build into the Kins at this stage in time, just wanting to ensure as much chunk potential as possible. Is that build on the expensive side? Transcendence, Fatalis, and then into Chins? That, that's pretty pricey. And it looks like he opted for the sustain instead, which I, I like this pickup probably more than opting for a damage-oriented item. Okay, how come? It's just he needs that... Survivability? Survivability, yeah. And, and it gives him a lot more kiting potential as well because with the Fatalis online, while he's auto-attacking and sustaining himself back to full health, which is pretty much critical at this stage in time, he knows that Snoopy's going to be getting healed by whether it's Changa or Sylvanas. And on top of that, you have to consider they have two meditations as well. That's true. And when you actually look at his build, he's kind of been forced into this because of his expensive start of the build. You've got to try and make um, things happen elsewhere in the build to try and answer that back. So go for a cheaper item like Assy. Why it wouldn't be the preferred choice if he had one, he'd probably go for Chins. He's got to make some give and take here and there. Yeah, Panda Cat having those early spills at the start of the game is what really helped out for Snoopy's end of things, since Snoopy was able to just farm out a little bit more passively than what Panda Cat had the <laughs> freedom to do. And I, I think that that's also really important for Snoopy to just maintain this 
presence and dominance in the dual lane side. And it looks like United are actually trying to flex a little bit more dominance themselves as they're making the oh, rotation Blake in. Breeze from Verizio. We're going to get beads from Snoopy immediately. And Snoopy turns that around straight away with the ultimate in response. Pain de Vion did ult down there as well, so it was an ult for all exchange. But we did, sorry, not an ult for all exchange because Snoopy still has his available, but Snoopy did use his beads there. And Snoopy having to expend his beads, that's something United are certainly going to keep track of. Pain de Vion on this Athena, those spam taunts are going to start flying non-stop and when that happens it's just always an issue jumping in from panda cat there on the forefront looking to aggress hurry wind against benji at the moment and now memory again in a bit of an awkward position trying to defend their mid lane who's getting bursted down the earth shaker did work and benji be able to clean this up but the meditation comes into play to the backside goes benji one more time focusing hurry wind again the meatball from chaos was good for will pick up the kill the glacial strike ionic is forced out as the thorns from benji is procced walrus engages onto benji just to disengage him but now snoopy's left alone against two it's a tank and a guardian against a lady with a wolf and now the rest of the united are chasing her down Verizio's war should be up soon but it's not even needed as panda cat will bring him down with the autos and the ricochets and immediately just like that panda cat from one in three to three and three which is pretty much the adc dream pretty good performance from united on that one network especially with the gold fury coming up too this is a big escalating window for united to push it out even more it was already at 5k we're jumping to six and a half thousand gold now and ten thousand experience taco that's the bigger number for me the 10k experience the experience is really what's going to be making the biggest impact here on the side of united because if there's one thing that i know about healer compositions is you never want to fall behind on them and as soon as you do it becomes incredibly difficult to find your way back in as long as E-United maintain the pressure. Just look at the difference in levels in the solo lane. It's level 19 on Benji right now. Up against Walrus is 15. A lot of that comes back to the start of the game, Taco. But it was going to happen anyway, I want to say, because Thanatos versus Osiris. Osiris should get the beat down on. The thing is... Gay were anticipating Walrus to not win that laning phase. You don't expect yeah. to win a laning phase as Osiris for Stantos, which is why we saw Walrus trying to rotate so early on into the game, but he was just unable to really provide any sort of massive impact early on, which is what you ideally want to happen if you're sacrificing your lane farm for rotations. Paul Demon was started, and Benji got his own Walrus away for now. Sandershot goes in very deep, and Sandershot eats more than he can bargain for. In with the Lord of the Afterlife, over to Waxy Moongo, Goes Benji. The tether will stun him in place. The slow again of pride, and now Hurry Wing comes into the battle to support his teammate. But Benji cares not. He's going to keep going, and Hurry Wing's now isolated and alone, trying to support his team. He falls down the mid lane of dead, and the Onyx next on the cards. Knocked away from multiple members of the team as the taunt comes in. They're looking for the cleanup on Snoopy here with Benji instead of investing into Yonic. But Yonic's still going to fall down anyway. Snoopy will get back to the safety of his tower for now. And this is just non-stop E United pressing W entirely in the face of In Memory of Gabe. And there's just nowhere for them to run anymore. And now Sinashaw is on his own trying to defend. Gets taunted in again. And another member falls down. Only Warus left standing against all five members of E United. Yes, E United are very low here, Taco. But they are still great grouped as five and could maybe even get the portal demon or the tier two tower. Not to mention you don't really need healers if you've got this much damage in frontline and frontline is really the biggest impact here. We talked about at the start of the game that this Amir and Athena were going to start being incredibly problematic and that's oh. a huge problem for Walrus. The ricochet and the T2 style. That was styled up. That right. was complete style. Felt good for Panda Cat, especially after <laughs> being beaten up at the start of this game by Snoopy. Let's be honest, Snoopy had his way with Panda Cat at the start. He wasn't a 2v1 scenario, but he's turned that around very well, has Panda Cat. The whole team of United looked fantastic today. Panda Cat's entirely out of the cage at this point in time, and I'm not sure Gabe had much of a chance of putting him back in it. He's really starting to impact these team fights in a very positive way. And Hurry Wind, he is 1 5 and 3. I don't want to credit some of these deaths to his positioning. He's actually been trying to support his team, if anything. The rest of the team haven't noticed that he needed help, though. Now he's in a bit of a tricky spot, trying to defend against the Fire Giant on his own. Surrounded by all the team, he'll drop the ultimate, but it's not going to be enough to stop E United advancing. They pick up Rory Wind, they have the Portal Demon, the Fire Giant started up again. At this point, though, I just feel so bad for Hurry Wind because, realistically, his gameplay hasn't been that bad yeah. in this game. The issue here is that Gabe just have no way to really support him. They don't have the frontline factor unlike EU United where Chaos is just getting the free cast meatballs all day long so he's having the time of his life. But poor Hurrywind on the other side, he's got Ionic and Ionic and well 
That's Me it. Remember, Yagay realized they couldn't contest the fire giant after Horiwin dying. They went to the left hand side and t did take down the tier one tower. The bad news is, though, is that E United now have a fire giant. All five members are strong. They could look to the right hand side for the tier two or the left for the tier one and tier two. Split push certainly wouldn't be out of the question here. Walrus already being forced out of his ultimate, recognizing that he was in the wrong neighborhood, even though it's his side of the map. Now, Phoenix defense is going to be a bit tricky for memory of Gabe here. When you look at their squad, Taco, and how they're going to clear the wave, it's only really Hori and Snoopy that really have any form of wave clear to really help without getting too far out of position. I'd imagine Gabe at this point in time, they're just going to forfeit these T1, T2 towers in the lanes where they are remaining because their best chance at winning a team fight at this point is underneath those phoenixes. Zeus ultimate is still a pretty big impact it's and it's the best way and the best chance that Gabe are probably going to get. It does feel a little bit unpracticed this looking at memory of Gabe. I don't feel they've really practiced enough of this Changar jungle to make it fortuitous for them. It seems to be on the cards he's 1-2 and Sorry, one, two, and three so far. He's not had a terrible game sign to show, but it just doesn't seem to fit Memory of Gabe's composition style that they've been having so far this season. The primary issue with it, I wouldn't say, is that it's unpracticed by Sino as much as it is just there as isn't enough. Not as only by, by the not, I don't mean by Sino, by, like, by the team as a whole. Yeah, but it's like their draft just doesn't fit the Changa point set, mm. like the mindset, because most teams, when you see them opt for this Changa, there's like one or two frontliner presence. And That's true. Ionic isn't really that frontline presence. A Sylvanas is more as like a supporting factor where he's there to toss out whips and have a little bit of setup potential. But whips. you ID Wisp. Whips. With not whips. God. We're not talking about whips. I was about to today, say, Hindu. don't be bringing up whips. It's been bad <laughs> enough with you just lately, young lady. I don't need any of that. But yeah, he does <laughs> toss out whips for the sustain and keep the team going. And on top of that, he has the ultimate available to him, which is excellent as far as setup potential, but they don't have the follow up. They, you need some frontline presence still, and with Ionic having to be the frontline as well as the follow-up engage, uh, there's just not enough of him to go around. Especially against three members of United. There's a frenzy pops, and Verizio's gonna eat a bit of poke damage rooted in place, but out of the range of the Phoenix. Still to the safety goes Verizio, but a great pull from Ionic can turn that one around. Verizio will drop down Ionic, credit for the kill. Benji, though, once again to the front line on this. Osiris gonna get ulted by Athena too. Has to disengage though, because he's taking a lot of poke from that Phoenix. The Phoenix has now fallen. United lose one member, but they get the Phoenix and they may get Hurrywind as well. They will. Meatball comes out from Chaos. And poor Hurrywind there all alone again, just doing the best he can to try and free cast his damage. But without the backup of his team, because they're just all getting zoned yep. out at the same time by the rest of E United. Benji is just all over Taunt this. In mid on Ionic Meatball hits, but he knocks him the wrong way. Walrus takes a lot more damage than he bargained for from that permafrost and from Pam, sorry, from Panda Cat, I should say, in the in hands of Benji. Not the permafrost coming out from Snoopy there. That'd be a bit weird. Minuet <laughs> now coming in. Benji, once again, going to get aggro from the Phoenix. Not much sustain on the side of the United, but they don't really need it thanks to that fire giant. With no ultimates available to the side of Gabe, this is going to be incredibly difficult because Thanatos, sure, you still have your execute up, but. What good is an execute if you can't get anybody low enough? Everybody back alive. Verizio may look to teleport into this fight, and he has done so with the rallying ritual. Now back to the forefront of his team. Another additional threat on the front line with the CC and setup potential that E United may need to try and bring down this Phoenix. And E United playing this one safe, waiting for the taunt from Pain to Beyond. The engage and that's is immediate. Good enough. Sinashaw is already near enough. Dad and Benji on the back line will make sure he picks up those pieces. The tatters of Rain as Chaos picks up a double kill for himself. Snoopy's still being busy on the front line, but he's all alone now. The ricochet hits, and Benji's waiting around the corner. And Benji just, <laughs> that is such a feels bad man moment for Snoopy. Trying to run away from Pandagod. He's chasing him down on one end, just straight into the arms of an Osiris, which is the last place you want to be as a hunter. Game one, gonna go the way of E United here. This keeps their hopes alive. And actually, this one point from game one, Ties them with LG so far. Ties them with LG. If they 2-0 against Memory Gabe here, they could have been 14 points, which is the same as what Eager's on right now. We don't know who's going to master still. Pressure is on oh. in the side of NA. And if anything, that makes things really exciting. Yeah. Because this is probably one of the last expected teams that people saw making it to this point. 
I mean, you mean towards the top three, top towards two, the top three, potentially, top yeah. yes. Because they, for most of the season, they've not been that good at United. They've had a lot of trials and tribulations to get through. Now they've found this roster, though, and they're make, really making a run for it at the end here. And this is just General Payne doing what he does best. He finds these team members that work so well as a mm -hmm. unit, and that's probably one of the most important parts. We harp on it all the time, synergy, synergy, synergy. But this is what Synergy does for your team, because if you look at the roster of Gabe, I mean, E United had complete control of that game from the start, and they maintained it the whole way through. Gabe had a pretty strong draft. We've seen a lot of teams have success with it, but I mean, Gabe is individual skill facing off against a unit, and they need to come together if they want to find a bounce back potential. Well